Welcome everyone. I just got the new Pickleball 1 VR game for the MetaQuest. Is it any good? Let's jump in and find out. All right, here we go. All right, guys, we're going to jump right into the game here. So for those of you who haven't seen what a MetaQuest looks like, it's that portable headset. So put my hand around and we'll dive right in. See you on the other side. All right, guys, here we go as we get into it here. Welcome to Pickleball 1. This is a short tutorial to get you up and running. So as you can see, they do a quick rundown on how to uh, play here. Now, I did check. They do have a full in-depth tutorial where they show all the rules, the two-bounce rule, all that stuff, the rules in the kitchen. Uh, we're going to bypass that. And as you see, guys, I'm going to do like a quick... Um, show of the basic of what they're showing here and then I'm going to kind of fast forward the rest of the footage of me doing this so some service here and as you see as you can see here it takes me a sec or two to kind of get used to it because of course you're just swinging it there it takes a second to get used to the paddle if you've never played virtual reality before some games have it where the uh, controller vibrates a little bit when you hit Hit with it other games don't this game doesn't right now but i can see that being an eventual update so you kind of have to take a few swings with it to adjust to how the paddle hits the ball or the virtual paddle hits the ball when you swing your uh, remote all right let's move on to the next drill All right, server term, we're doing lobs, drops, drives. All right, let's get into that. Three, two, one, go, lob. Drive. Drive. Okay, so I like this drill. Let's try a few drives. Lob. Lob. Drop. Volleys, here we go. All right, so volleys going. Three. Okay, volleys two, going anywhere. One. Go. Oh, there we go. Volley. Dinks. Okay, and it's got the. Two. I like how it's making us dink side, dink. side to side. Okay. There we go. Volley. All right. Dink. Volley. Overhead. Overhead. Overheads. All 
All right, moving on. Okay, so next one. Let's do three, two, third shot, draw. one, go. Oh, and it's draw. Right, it's okay. Yeah, so find the drives are a little bit hard because they want those super deep, so it takes a little bit. As you can see I was putting a few way out. Right. So finding that nice spot to, takes a few shots, but just like in real life when you're learning how to play. So right, there we go. Same thing with my drops. Drop. Drive. Gearbox on here. Okay, you gotta pay for it, but you got a gearbox on here. Let's switch it up to this one. the drills let's see what the workouts look like. we have a dink dink okay let's try this one and for this one guys I'm gonna kind of um, I'm gonna show the first little bit and then I'm gonna kind of fast forward through here because it is for like a uh, four minute one three two one, go. So as the fast forwarding is going on here, um, this was definitely, I found, one of the most fun things of this game. Um, I want, I'm going to go back in and try some of these other workouts later on, but uh, I found this one. I was getting me moving side to side um, and getting me to work uh, work on my hands. Like I said, if you're um, if you're like a pro player or if you're like even a high competitive player, this is, this is kind of like a fun thing to do on like a gross day when you can't get into an indoor court or can't get to a other court and you just want to kind of chill at home, still get a little bit of sweat on and uh, get uh, work on your hand-eye coordination because it still works the hand-eye. Um, so far, the ball physics are pretty good here. I'm getting a decent bit of spin with those backhand dinks, with my forehand dinks as well. All right, let's go into a match here. Let's see if I can get my serves in. Game one, zero, zero, two. And as you can see, guys, I've selected the auto run. Um, so that one, you just have to press a button to go up to the volley thing. They do have the Side joystick out. moving zero, one. Zero, zero, take a little one. bit of getting used to. Um, 
just because you want to make sure you're not running over the kitchen line. So I that one, I if you're new to VR, I don't recommend using that one. I recommend just using the auto run option that they have here, um, just Point. because it's uh, one zero. If you're not used to VR, you might one. yourself a little dizzier motion sickness. I recommend um, um, doing about 20 minutes at a time if you're not used to VR at first to get your eyes Point. and your body to zero. to uh, one. having all this stuff come at you in your face and then and then it actually not being there. Because often Point. I've seen people like three zero. If you can probably you've one. probably seen hundreds of TikTok and YouTube videos of people falling over. So um if if you are a uh, regular VR user, um you can definitely switch to this version. The one thing Point. I can say about Four this zero. one if you're looking one. like coaches and stuff like that, the um the manual Point. run Five obviously zero. will be better one. for that. Um, but if you're just looking for like a basic kind of let's work on my hand-eye coordination Thanks, and stuff like Five that, zero. the auto run Two. works perfect. Also, if you don't have a lot of room, because I find with Six the joystick, um, with the manual run, I find myself creeping over further and further in the room. So if your room does not Two. have a lot of extra space, like and you just have your little tiny space there, zero seven. One. I recommend doing the auto Six, run just because you zero won't uh, naturally move as far. You might lean and stuff seven, while zero. you're trying to One. dink. And swing at the ball, zero, but uh, you won't. Uh, I find you won't be running into things. Eight, zero, manual, two. and you just instinctively kind of shift over as you're doing it. So, Point. nine zero two. Side up zero nine. All right, let's try some singles. Game one zero. Side to side. Point. One zero. Point. Two six. Point. Three six. All right. Okay. Welcome back, everyone. I'm back from the headset. So my first impressions of this game, uh, pretty, pretty fun. Uh, uh, biggest thing is uh, uh, that I look at for a game like this is the ball physics. Uh, just because you want it to be as close to the real thing as you can get with uh, what limitations virtual reality has. So I compare this to a lot of um, table tennis games or tennis games that I have uh, played on VR. So the ball physics are pretty good. Uh, you can get decent spin on the ball. Um, and there are drills in there where you can actually work on um, spin serves and stuff like that. Uh, with the dinks, um, when you're dinking with your backhand, I find the spin works really, really well. You can actually get it to come close to the net. You can get it to come over with some top spin. Um, the forehand, pretty much the same as well. Can can be a little bit more. Not it's not um, it's not any by means like horrible. Um, I find when you're, um, for me, who's someone who does a lot of like chop backhands, uh, backspin shots, um, that doesn't work very well when you're dinking. Um, you can get a little roll shot with your backhand, but if you're trying to do like a little chop over the net, that one's not that one's not uh, there as much. But that's, like I said, we're looking at this more as like a uh, a fun thing to do if you're stuck in stuck at the house, and you can't get to the court because obviously n nothing's going to beat the real thing. But, um, and like I said, I'm looking at this as a guy who plays competitively. So, um, really like that. I haven't tried the multiplayer one yet. As I, while I was playing, there wasn't a lot of people online. Now, VR is already a very niche video game. So, there's not a huge, uh, a massive population depending on the type of games that you're playing. So, but I, ha I did see on, um, on their thing, they actually had like a little mini tournament that they had in there. So, I'm going to keep an eye out for that. And maybe, who knows, maybe we'll do like a live stream. On Instagram or something, if uh, there's a tournament, and I'll uh, go into that and try it out. But I will try the multiplayer game uh, or the multiplayer side of it again. Um, the regular play when you're playing with a, um, an, an AI, AI partner and AI opponents, you can up the difficulty and make it and make it pretty good. Um, I played a few extra matches there that weren't on the video uh, where uh, the games went to three sets. Um, the one drawback using the auto run is that you don't. Poaching is hard is harder to do because unless you have room where you're playing, you can't really step 
you will have to actually manually step over and hit it. Whereas if you're using the uh, manual run with the joystick, you can move around. The biggest problem, with, like I said, with that is if you're not used to VR, it's it's uh, jol it's kind of jolting for the eyes and the mind uh, to run up really quick and then stop when your feet aren't actually moving. So the nice thing with the auto run is that you do a steady run up when you're getting to the, the kitchen line, and then you're there at the kitchen. Um, it'll automatically move you back if the dink's close to where, where your feet would be. And then you can dink it up so it adjusts to give you the best optimal shot. Now, like I said, if you are want to get a little bit more competitive and you're trying to poach, I recommend having a decent amount of space um, in the room. So then that way you can do that. I also didn't try the augmented reality where you can actually have it so you're looking at a wall. So if you find, say if you go into your garage and say you're using your garage door, and the nice thing about the meta is it's a portable one. So as long as you have, and um, with this, you wouldn't need the Wi-Fi part, but you can go into your garage outside of your house. And what you do is you draw the border on that wall and then you step the seven feet back from it and you can actually do it as if you're dinking off the wall. Now, where I was playing in my, in, uh, my room here, I didn't have space to do that. I also didn't have a lot of space to move side to side. So what you can see from the videos is a lot of me just kind of letting the auto run do its thing. And me dinking, but I still had a really good time and I still got competitive and I got annoyed when my AI partner messed up and stuff like that. So um, this game's um, I found really, really fun. My favorite part by far, though, is the uh, the workout or, or the drills um, like that uh, where you saw me do that, that dink dink slam workout. They have longer ones and they have other ones where you're working on different skills. And yes, I know you're not actually holding a paddle and hitting it, but. The side to side lateral movement, the hand eye coordination, you still have to bring the watch your paddle come down, hit the ball over. It still helps with that. Uh, you'd be amazed it just playing a little bit of this when you can't get into the uh, into the gym or to the courts to play, how much it'll help with your hand eye coordination. Um, I know I used to play on the VR here before there was a, like a table tennis or um, tennis games. I used to play Beat Saber to get my hand-eye coordination, like, at least still working on it. It's no different than playing one of those uh, game, um, one of those things where they have the lights on the wall and you're hitting the lights like that, trying to get your reaction times and stuff down. So that's by far my favorite part of it, and I actually played it a little longer after I shot the video here and I actually worked up a bit of a sweat. So it was... Um, um, I really like the workout mode on there. I like the um, how they have regular paddles. They have elongated paddles on there for you to switch through. So if you are a regular elongated paddle user... They have an elongated paddle on there that you can uh, that you can switch your paddle to. Now I didn't try it and see how see if there was that much of a difference when you're hitting the ball, but um, but uh, it's still there as an option. So at least then visually when you're looking at it, it's more in line with the size of your paddle. So I like that. Obviously because I'm ambidextrous and I switch hands when I play, I couldn't do that in this. So it actually fo forced me to do more. Uh, backhand roll shots even though I do do those in a game but if the ball's a certain distance away I'll instinctively switch to my left hand obviously I couldn't do that playing in this VR game so I like that it's focusing me to work on my footwork and move over and do that so the biggest thing with VR um, that I'll tell you guys right now is you have to get you have to get into it. you have to feel like pretend use a little bit of imagination to pretend that this is actually really happening is you'll see some people play games like this and they'll just kind of be standing there and swinging their hands back and forth like this. You can kind of do that and get away with this. VR is a little bit more unforgiving with that. You actually have to get the hand down to a roughly appropriately the right spot. But if you get yourself into this and you're actually in your proper stances, you're doing your proper uh, swings and your strokes, it's really good practice when you don't have a lot of room to, uh, or when you don't have the option to say go outside. Like I'm in Northern Alberta and like it's, the weather's pretty nice right now, but I know come January or February, it's going to be like minus 40 outside. So if I can't get to the gym to go, go play, I got no option to play outside or play anywhere else. So this will be a really good thing for me to use. Uh, when I have some free time, when I'm not spent doing stuff with the kids or uh, with Irene. So um, I'm going to give this game probably, for starters, a kind of seven out of ten. Um, as long as uh, as long as they do what most VR companies do and they keep up with it, uh, um, as um, their programming gets better, they uh, add patches to make um, the physics of the ball a little bit better. Like I said, the physics of the ball are pretty pretty good. 
Um, think of it more as um, the ball moving more as like an indoor ball. So it moves a little bit slower. The bounces are a little bit higher. You can put spin on it. Um, not a lot, but you can still do it. It's a nice kind of fun game um, to play um, if you go to... Um, now, obviously, they probably don't have this at like one of those VR cafes, but if they did and you got three people to go with you, it'd be something fun to try out with that. But um, for something at home, for you to try out on your own, um, like I said, the workout mode by far is my favorite. If you are not, especially if you're not into like online playing with other people, because that not that's not for everyone. I'm normally not big on online playing games, but I'm definitely gonna try the online one of this out and see if I can, uh, you know, meet some meet some people who uh, are also into pickleball because they would have they have to be into pickleball if they bought this game, right? So, very very fun. I recommend playing it and. Um, who knows? Message me on uh, Instagram here, and if you guys want to see, maybe we'll uh, set up like a live stream where I play some uh, multiplayer matches online, and everyone can kind of check it out from there through uh, and look through my eyes and see how it looks. All right. Till next time, guys. Have a good one, and I'll see you later.